Nazreen, assalamu alaikum. Today we are honored to have uh, Mr. Qasim Somra, who is the member of Sindh Assembly, as well as he's the Parliamentary Secretary for Health in Sindh. We will be talking to him about, uh, about health situation in Pakistan related to COVID, vaccination efforts, but also private-public partnership and, uh, and the status of basic health units, maternity clinics in, in, in the uh, province of Sindh. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your time and joining us today. My first question thank to you, you would be, yeah. my first question to you, sir, is that Sindh government has done a better job of managing COVID-19 and you've received a lot of accolades. Are you personally satisfied with the performance of your team of health ministry? What could you have done better if you were to prepare for the next pandemic? How would you do it differently? Uh, thank you so very much for having me. Uh, yes, uh, this has been a kind of, uh, see, we have, uh, we have learned from the experiences from the world. Uh, we said, uh, we learn from the professionals, the experts, the doctors, those who are really uh, very much worried about uh, the outcome or, or the patients who are being in, in the hospitals. So, uh, um, we actually started with the uh, couple of things. A, we learned the experience from the world, which uh, actually the facing the first, in, in fact, uh, the start of this pandemic. So they, uh, their, their consistency with the policy was to a to trace the in fact the b they trace the contact of their that in fact the and c then put them or the uh, break the cycle of that uh, whole spread. So the two uh, and of course uh, we rigorously uh, went out to uh, to the to the towns uh, to the mahallas to the major our major city which is Karachi and of course then Hyderabad and then. Uh, then Sakhar as well. So we uh, we were able to uh, contain the virus. And though you all know that we are being uh, criticized by the federal government at the first instance that why you are taking the, all these decisions alone and a we not considering the economic aspect of the uh, of the whole country. So, but having said that, we were of the view that people's health is much more priority. Uh, for the government of Sen, uh, for our, uh, uh, for all the, uh, for all the, even for the economy of the country. Once people are healthy, people are going to their offices in a routine, a normal way. They can uh, perform better than uh, once they are ill or uh, the society the overall in the community. If the spread is much higher, so, uh, there are huge portions of Sen. Even in Karachi, forget about the rural area for a minute, even in Karachi, the slums of Karachi, where we have basic health units that are in really bad shape, right? And in, in very different, uh, let's, let's leave the adjectives away, uh, not in a, in a functioning way. How do we may do the private-public partnership that everybody keeps talking about, that the uh, health minister, uh, Dr. Pechao talks about, how do we make that more uh, productive? How do we make that actually uh, execute on it better? Since uh, Madam uh, Minister Saba has uh, taken oath of the uh, of her ministry, she is is focused more on primary health care. Now we have started the uh, uh, you know the our public private partnership is one of the exemplary in in South Asia and of course in the world. We are ranked amongst uh, third best public private partnership institution. So what we did is in 2016-17, what we did is that we have uh, 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 invited a number of other partners to engage with them so that they can uh, uh, actually up, not only upgrade, but they can have a, a better service provider at the grassroots level, uh, particularly, as you said, in slum areas or in uh, uh, in rural, uh, in other uh, in a rural sand as well. So uh, for that, the PPHI is a great example for that. If you go through the PPHI facilities, you'll find a one. Not I. I would not say that they, those are the best one, but they, those are the better facilities. That uh, uh, if a patient is uh, is uh, is there, he is taken care of well. A, B, 
we recently uh, like a couple of years back we have with the help of world bank uh, or uh, with the help of unicef we actually uh, piloted a few projects in in tharparkar and in numarkod as well where we have improved where we have not only improved the infrastructure of the government dispensaries but we have provided all the uh, antenatal care postnatal care and then of course that is uh, for uh, mother and child health so that is being uh, like um, is one of the best example nowadays is quoted across the globe now that has been uh, um, accredited by the world bank and now they are a partnering us in one our 1000 days plus program so inshallah by next uh, budget we will be launching that as well in five districts and then the biggest example is our gumbert institute where now you have a you have a liver transplant you have a kidney transplant all are free that is again a, one of the private public private partnership you have nicvd the flagship project of sin government of health health department where you have a third, you have treated 3.5 million uh, heart uh, uh, coronary related patients and all free of uh, all free of charges any charges and um, from uh, uh, so their opds to their uh, uh, bypasses so these are one of the best interventions in health department where we are providing health services uh, to a common man uh, uh, without any you know as as uh, in pakistan it's a tendency or trend that people follow somebody have a some kind of an approach or that's where they'll get a better facility no in icvd is for the everyone and people not only from sind but we from punjab from kp you know from afghanistan they have uh, uh, they are being treated there and without uh, all are free of cost so this is one of the best example now it is up to you know uh, it's up to the uh, the leadership up to the uh, the governments uh, to take care of such facilities to provide them ample uh, uh, funds uh, and the environment so that uh, they can perform better so there is a lesser involvement of our uh, 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 our command or our authorities in secretary level so we have uh, in, we have uh, given them a fully uh, uh, decentralized system only uh, they are being audited financially and of course we definitely look for, uh, uh, audit their performances as well but otherwise they are fully independent to uh, to provide all kind of services to the people of sind and of course pakistan so i want to push back a little bit on on two of your assertions number one that we don't have sufficient money i've personally visited many bhus including the one in mahmudabad karachi and korangi and orangi and qasba where i see the facilities when they were when they were built were really good right but what those places are suffering from are absenteeism uh doctors don't show up on work uh there are only low level staff that shows up for work but not a, not a high level staff so that's problem number 1 that i think second problem that we as in you know in academia also see is that the vocational training of uh, uh, your mid level primary care staff midwives for example right there there are not enough community workers what used to be called i think uh, uh, lhvs or lhcs uh, you know uh, lady, lady health visitors we don't have sufficient number of them right uh, how can rest of the rest of the province i'm not only talking about the ministry of sen i'm talking about uh, the academia i'm talking about the industry how can they help you rebuild those skills so that people can actually have access to them uh that's very important uh, really we have really focused nowadays uh, uh, to train these lhws a when we are inducting to a system b we have established now we have established up to the rural areas even not only in karachi but in hyderabad in uh, said let's say in tharparkar as well in sangar in in uh, in different uh, other districts in khairpur in larkana in nawabsha in uh, everywhere we have established now institutions where not only these uh, lhws are hired there but they are trained for a certain specific job so, and same as for the cmws the community midwives then you have a lhvs then 
so we are train uh, not only providing them training but before inducting them after in even after inducting them we uh, uh, make sure that they have a refresher courses uh, and then they will be assigned and now these all are union council based uh, uh, job opportunities we are not letting these uh, a woman from say from south is working in uh, in north so it, it will be difficult for her to commute on daily basis or even for a lady so we are hiring on purely on union council basis or the facility basis a we as the as you said about the doctors and the other staff that is where we all have to you know uh, we are being uh, criticized for it and of course that is a to a certain extent is a legitimate but uh, we have uh, like we we post the doctors and it's unfortunate it's it's unfortunate in a way that these doctors uh, whenever they are posted there they do not perform the the way it should be we now we recently have uh, almost terminated more than 100 doctors because of their because of their uh, performances which where they uh, they were seriously uh, involved into um, into doing jobs somewhere else instead in the government facility where they are posted so we are again nowadays we have a certain uh, we have revised our uh, our monitoring system we are now <clears throat> we have now placed uh, uh, all the, uh, the certain supervisors to look after uh, such facilities yeah we are of course in a one in in a phase it's, i'm not saying it is uh, it will be implemented next year but uh, i i'm feel that we are into a phase of uh, automizing the whole uh, uh, the system where we will uh, not only uh, Uh, make sure that they are there but we, we will also make sure that they perform there uh, so that the people get be benefited about it so this is uh, uh, we are like in a in a process of uh, doing it and uh, in, a, in a way uh, set in certain areas we have done it and uh, we are already in a process of doing it yes okay so my next and final question to you would be on a positive note and that is uh, you you i think you also mentioned that your unicef cluster uh, project has been ha, has received a lot of accolades that you guys have done a couple of clusters to address this human resource issue that we were discussing how can you expand on that using newer technology the technology that we are using right now I and mean, there is no reason that why a doctor in hyderabad shouldn't be treating someone sitting in karachi right when do we expect our technology to be embedded in our bhu so we can reduce our uh, our uh, our our reliance on these doctors who don't show up to work uh, see uh, now we have uh, divided this program into a, it's a multi sectoral project like as you said but when we did it in a, with the help of unicef in tharparka uh, we have uh, not only uh, we are not only uh, we have not only hired the lhws at the uh, village level we have hired the community midwives to uh, uh, to again visit those women which is uh, who are uh, uh, like uh, we need care and uh, of course when she conceives it which she is, she needs care uh, then again uh, all the events when she is in involved into we would like uh, we provide them few uh, financial advantages like uh, we should transfer some cash for them then we will uh, we are also looking uh, for family planning uh, once they are uh, once they give a birth to a child and then uh, we would like to uh, uh, train them with some vocational training so that they can earn something you know uh, uh, from onwards and then of course the the next and the last target is to that that, that kid should be enrolled in a an early childhood uh, education system so these are the different clusters of uh, you know it's a multi sectorial project uh, in the making sure that uh, uh, this should be adopted in uh, initially we are doing it uh, and it's all cluster model it is not that every dispensary will be uh, uh, doing this job it is a it's a cluster of six dispensaries 
where we will have a one ambulance um, and a ambulance with equipped with all facilities. We'll have a WMO, which is women medical officer. We have a medical officer, and then we are identifying their uh, their referral uh, on 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 that cluster basis. And then that referral will be uh, maybe BSU, maybe a, a RSC, maybe a Talka Headquarter Hospital, maybe a DHQ, and then of course their secondary and the and the tertiary hospital. And these all are cluster models. Every six dispensary within a range of one and a half kilometer, we identify we have identified them, and then they will be approached to them. And uh, we are certainly involving a, a technological intervention, which is that that LHV will be provided a, a certain mobile facility or an app-based facility, so that if she is visiting to some some any woman, she should in, uh, you know put a data into it, and so that uh, and of course for the cash registry as well. So uh, this will be a huge uh, in a way project. Um, uh, with the with the technological intervention, with the of course uh, human resource intervention, and then uh, the the data will uh, will be beneficial for uh, in making more uh, you know uh, more comprehensive policies for uh, for these issues uh, in not only in rural areas but in urban areas as well. Mr. Somra, that, that is exactly where the rest of the world is heading as well. I mean, I can give you examples of Colombia, a couple of countries in, in Africa, where, uh, which have been uh, a good mo role model that we can follow. Uh, from a registry perspective, for example, you know, we don't have an electronic health record on a provincial basis. There's no registry for cancer to, that exists today. I know it's on horizon. I, I know that it's on horizon and some of your team members are probably working on it. But we don't really have an execution date. We don't really have a date when we can plug, turn the plug on and say, you know what, from now on, we will be running. Your government has been in power for now several years, mashallah. When do you think you will turn that plug on? Yeah, we, are, we, are, we have already uh, in a process of uh, first uh, putting an a, a act of, uh, from the assembly. Number one, we pass an act so that we have uh, some legitimacy or legal cover to, you know, uh, to get a data from a household and then we put a, then we, that, that data should be, uh, the government of sin should be the custodian of that data. So all these are uh, require uh, some legal uh, cover, and of course, you know, uh, Pakistan may the only re social registry network that we have is the uh, WISP, um, Benazir Income Support Program. Now they have renamed it with the SAS. So uh, it was uh, that is uh, the only uh, uh, initiate uh, initiation uh, done by the People's Party's regime in 2008 uh, 13. So that uh, we are we are trying to re not only replicate but we are trying to with a with a modern uh, version of the same kind of a cash registry to be in, uh, in place in sin uh, uh, sin province as well uh, we are in a process of uh, the legislation a b uh, we have already done a uh, poverty elevation survey in in sin uh, through the Planning and Development Department. So we have a uh, one of the our, uh, Haris Gazdar Saab is is leading that uh, that project in government of, under the uh, PND department. So we are in a process of doing it, but this is a, one of the most difficult job in a way, and uh, it is not an easy task to do because you are going to from serving. Uh, in Pakistan and uh, in, a, in a rural society where everybody wants, you know, uh, sometimes people uh, malign with the data or the with the statics, but we have to, you know, do something extraordinary to uh, to catch this model uh, and uh, showcase the world as well. Let, let me let me ask you to give me a date, an approximate month, when you will be presenting that legislation in the provincial uh, assembly that you talked about. Uh, it, we are in a process. Um, no, no, I can't. I I, I can just can't put it in a in a in a date wise. But I can't do it. But at the moment, we are in a process. Like we have done uh, quite a bit of a primary work, and Arisab is uh, uh, doing it. Uh, I believe uh, 
within a, after the budget we'll we'll be doing we'll be doing some uh, some kind of legislation inshallah so if you weren't able to do that when the next election comes should your constituent be asking you that you didn't deliver on what you asked what you uh, promised us uh, see i mean this is a uh, uh, yeah we have already manifested this in in the in our previous election that we'll be doing it and um, as you know i this is one of the difficult as i said this is one of the difficult tasks but yes we will be doing it and definitely people will ask about uh, all these uh, uh, questions uh, and uh, or the promises that we have made in the previous election and definitely people will ask about it, what are, what are the implementation uh, stages that you have we have crossed or we have covered so far so uh, but uh, having said uh, we will do it inshallah thank you very much mr somro uh, so you you, you uh, were watching Mr. Qasim Sumra, who is a member of Sindh Assembly, also the Parliamentary Secretary of, of Health for Sindh. He's, he's highlighted some of the key areas that we all agree is a good news for Sindh. For example, the way Sindh government uh, handled the COVID pandemic. Uh, mashallah, you know, I hope we don't get jinxed, but, you know, we've done a, they have done a good job. But there are still areas for improvement, basic health units, private public partnership, the health registry. He's made these promises and inshallah when the election times comes again and he's running for re-election, we will run these staves back to you to remind you the promises that he had made. Thank you, Somrasab. Inshallah, we'll meet again. Pleasure having you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Start.